Hello, I'm Louis Passfield. I'm a professor in sports science and I've worked in applied sports science in elite sport for many years, particularly in cycling. In August of this year, I fell off my bike and I broke 14 ribs, uh, 12 down the back where I landed on them and two are down the side here. I broke my collarbone, an, oblig an obligatory injury for cyclists I know, and in the process I punctured my lung too. So I ended up in hospital and I'm super grateful for all the help and support that I received in hospital and the, the work that people did to help me heal and get better. So I thought I'd create a vlog, not something I've done before, um, as a way of saying thank you and paying forward if you like. And I thought I'd do that by documenting my training to try and get back to fitness and then to add in a little bit of my own comments in terms of using my expertise as a sports scientist to share with you. So um, over the next few weeks, what I plan to do is to start training again on a bike. Up until now, I've been going to the gym, doing some rehab or functional strength training and easy rides up 20, 30 minutes of just easy pedaling, just for fun, nothing uh, strenuous at all. But now I feel like I'm ready to start training again and I thought I'd share that journey with you. Now I'm based here in Calgary, uh, and so that means that my training is going to be largely indoor until it gets disrupted by travel. I'll probably head to the UK at some point, but I'll still try and keep posting regularly, uh, even when I'm moving around. And really my aim here is to regain most, if not all of my fitness that I had from before the accident. So please feel free to leave comments, suggestions and questions, uh, because what I'd love to do is to create a community of people that are interested in sharing ideas about training uh, and, and how they how to conduct those. Thanks for watching. Okay, so here I am ready to relaunch my training campaign. And um, when I fell off in August, I punctured my lung and it took them about a month to resolve that issue. So for, from the beginning of August to the beginning of September, I was uh, exercising very, very gently indeed because I didn't want to exacerbate the punctured lung. Since the beginning of September, so that's about six, seven weeks ago now, I've been riding steadily, uh, just enjoying the riding. For quite a bit of the time, I really didn't feel like training hard. And now I've got to a stage where I'm just starting to feel a little bit more like it. And the key sensations in terms of feeling more like it for me are that um, when I do a training ride, at times I'm more inclined to push myself on the hill. So I feel like I've got a bit more in reserve. And after the training sessions, I'm not quite, or easy rides rather than training sessions. After those easy rides, I'm not as tired uh, as I was before. So initially, the first few rides, I'd go out, ride easily for 30 minutes or an hour, come back, and then that would be it. I'd be done for the day. Not, not really uh, interested in doing much else. Now, I've clearly moved on a, a level from that, so I feel like I'm ready to train. Um, my setup for uh, indoor training, I'll, I'll take a moment just to show you, um, is uh, just here. So I'm training indoors with a, with a Tax Neo trainer. Uh, and it's linked up to an Apple TV, and then I'm going to be running Zwift uh, whilst I'm training. I like to use Zwift for a couple of different reasons. The, um, the first one being that um, I can program in the training sessions myself. And in, in this case, what I'm going to do is use an, an exercise test setting. So I'm going to run it a little bit like the training session, a little bit like a, a lab session. So excuse me while I fiddle around with my, uh, my cleats. And... Um, the other reason is, towards the end of the test, once the, the ride starts to get hard, the graphics, the visual feedback works really nicely for me in that um, it helps keep me motivated and focused and feels like I actually am getting something useful back from um, the, the effort that I'm putting in. It's not just simply a one-way ride to destruction, but uh, I can actually see myself going faster on the screen. So it just helps with motivation a little bit and to keep pushing myself. So. I'm warming up very gently now and um, the test that I'm going to do is a gradual increasing ride and basically it's going to be a very gentle test I'll, I'll talk through the details in a couple more minutes yeah, sorry in a moment um, and I'm just going to see how far I can go now it is notionally a maximal test so I want to see how hard I can push myself but I'm not going to take it in a really super serious manner so I'm going to go as hard as I can by the end of the test but I'm not going to try and s squeeze out every last drop of effort. I just want to get a sense of where my limits are and how much they've come down over a period of time. So I'm just going to set up the um, session on, on Apple TV 
And basically what I've done is loaded a, a custom training session that I've already made. And uh, it's just a steady ramp. So I'm actually gonna start the session off right now in the background. Okay, so I'm, I'm starting the workout now on, on Zwift. And it's basically just starting off what for me should be a relatively easy workout rate, 125 watts. And it's gonna go up at five watts a minute. So every 12 seconds, an additional one watt is added to the resistance. And it's just gonna keep doing that. Every 12 seconds, another one watt. So in one minute, that'll be five watts. After five minutes, I've gone from 125 to 150 watts and so on. Now, based on my fitness before I started, uh, before I had the accident, I would typically get to around 260 watts doing this kind of a ride before I decide I've had enough. And my record was about 290, something like that, done a couple of years ago when I was feeling particularly strong and motivated. Today, I'm not really expecting to go much beyond about 240, and it may even be as low as 220, 230. What I'm trying to do by using a slow, steady ramp is really get a feel for the kind of power output I can sustain. So once I reach a point where I'm starting to struggle, with a slow ramp like this, there's no bluffing. I can't keep it going for much longer. Um, my body just starts to feel the limits of the exercise intensity. So that's what I'm gonna do. Five watts a minute, I'm already now on 135, having started 120. I'm recording my heart rate from a heart rate monitor here. I'm looking at the screen, I can see my heart rate's 116 now, 116. And my max is about 165. And today, I'll be quite happy if I hit about a 160 beats by the end of the test. So, it's just a nice, gentle ramp. Now, um, I'm sure you've heard of the um, professional cyclist Pogaccia, and one of the coaches and physiologists that works behind him, San Milan, uses a similar kind of approach. But instead of a smooth ramp, he does it in steps. So, Pogaccia rides for 10 minutes at one work rate, and then goes up and rides another one for another 10 minutes and so on. Someone like Pogaccia could do 10 stages. That's 100 minutes, just over an hour and a half of riding for a single test. So I'd like to do that kind of approach. Same idea, being able to sustain those power outputs for reasonably long periods of time, gradually increase it. But 140 minutes isn't something that you can easily give up every time you want to get a glimpse into how well you're going. Whereas with this test, for me, it's typically around about 25, 30 minutes. And I can incorporate that into my training quite regularly and even include it as part of a, a training session and then go on and do something else. So that's why I've made that kind of a compromise. But if you're really interested in looking at sustainable power, then you might want to think about even doing slower rounds than that. Anyway, I'll pause there. Get my breath back a little bit, pedal a bit further on into the test, and report back in a bit later on as I'm pedaling a bit harder. Okay, I'm now 10 minutes into the test. You can see me riding along here on the screen in Zwift, and I'm very grateful for the fan going here, cooling me down to having started 125 watts. You can see after 10 minutes, my power output is now. 175 watts and my heart rate there 139 beats so it's really jumped up a long way when uh, I was feeling fitter before the accident I'd have expected to get that kind of heart rate well over 200 watts so this is not going to be a long test for me so I'm now 20 minutes into the test at 5 watts a minute that means I've increased by 100 watts since my starting power output so I've gone from 125 to 225 watts. And now, in a normal state of fitness for me, before the accident, this would be th where things just start to work hard. Today, as you can tell, I'm really nearly done. And I'm thinking, if I can do another five minutes, I'll be happy. You can hear my breathing's high, I'm struggling to talk, 
the heart rate's 157, so I'm getting close within 10 beats of the maximum heart rate I'm expecting to see today. So I'll join you again as I max out. 10, you can count me down. It's hard. 25 minutes. For five minutes, I've increased 25 watts. So, where I was at 225 when I last checked in, that extra 25 took me up to about 250 watts at the end of the test. So, that's a great benchmark. I'm really pleased with that power output. On one level, I'm thinking. I probably haven't lost as much as I thought I had, necessarily. Uh, but still, a long way short of the best kind of test that I could do prior to the accident. But it's only in the year prior, I got to 280, 290. And on one test, I remember thinking, if I really push hard, I'm going to get 300. The other thing you might be thinking today is, well, Louis, you, was that really a max test? You were still talking a little bit at the end. There wasn't that total commitment. And you're absolutely right. There was a little bit in the tank there. And that's okay for a couple of reasons. Firstly, I want to be able to repeat this kind of an effort during training. And if I really go hard, it's very hard mentally to commit to doing that on a regular basis. So I don't try. There's plenty of data through the whole of the test and how I feel by the point I stop for me to gauge whether I feel the same, better or worse on average. And as I proceed through the training, what I'm really looking forward for are clues that my training and my fitness are progressing. The precise quantification of my maximum power output is not critical in that. But the other thing is, okay, so today I didn't go to my max, but how far off would you say I was? Do you think I could have lasted another minute if I really tried hard? Two? Yeah, I'm not sure. I don't think that would have been possible. One and a half, who knows? 30 seconds, pretty much for sure. Had I gone another minute, instead of concluding that my max is around 250, and I'll calculate that more accurately by looking back through the data later, and we'll look at that in a subsequent vlog, but around 250, if I did another one minute, 255. So 250, 255, okay, if you're being really precise about your calibration and everything, you can surely measure your power output to that kind of resolution. But the minute you step into a training environment and you go on the road, even on the static turbo like this, you can't control your power to within five watts. So at the end of the day, that five watts is neither here nor there. I'm looking for much more substantial gains from my training over a period of time. And although it won't be in the next month or so, I'd like to think I can get back to reaching 280 watts, something like that. And then those five watts will be neither here nor there in the bigger story. So that's my max test for today. Hope you enjoyed watching and see you again for the next session fairly soon.